Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO The Lasters of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Tom's Clover. But right now, we need to talk about the Yesenen Volpin Plan. A new conference has been announced by December's Minister of the Economy, Alexander Yesenin Volpin, to smooth over tensions between the industrial magnates and the workers of the Republic. While a number of unions have announced their lack of interest in the conference, the majority of the worker representing work bodies are expected to attend. Likewise, the upper crust of Tom's business elite is expected to be present, seeking to earn goodwill from the Decembrist government. The conference is expected to see a state of worker conditions in Central Siberia discussed, and grievances from employees and employers both brought to the government's attention. Analysts believe the conference is unlikely to provide deep reforms to significantly soothe worker tensions in the region. The Decembrist government is occupied by many issues, only one of which is the industrial sector, nevertheless. The openness of the Lekakyov administration and its willingness to confront problems head-on has earned its praise from the citizens. The Yesenin development plan will likely increase the stability of the Republic and further improve the popularity of the Decembrist government. All shall work together in the Decembrist Republic. Slightly increases trade unions and uh, effectiveness and Tom's gets slightly increased Decembrist popularity. Nice. And of course right now we're embracing the embrace of idealism. It is the philosophical embrace of the mind as consti constitutive of the material world. It is pointless to discuss the matters of the material world in itself outside the limits of human experience. It is one of the dominant conclusions of the December society that idealism must influence any discussion of political structures. Unlike Marxists, technocrats, and other cynical ideologues attached to the material world as an end in itself, we remain aware that reality is impossible to separate from those who experience it. The days of harvest cannot be separated from the presence of tended to their fields, nor can be separated from their traditions and cultural heritage. Severing this deep connection between our environment and ourselves in the name of progress is a deeply dangerous threat to the well-being of our society. Idealism must be embraced, and materialism must be expunged from the body politic. Duty of the state to prove academic base. And, uh, that's not even slowly, it's just academic base gets better. Our industrial equipment begins to get better as well. Decrease business taxes, but you get more growth, but more, you get more inflation. And free the laborers as well. Uh, slowly improve. I want to do that one first, though. Free the laborers. Russian civilization is built on the back of free men. Serfdom was an aberration that has thankfully been fixed. We must remain vigilant to ensure that new threats to individual liberty are forever kept in check. Industrial workers must remain free if we are to keep the mind virus of socialism at bay and let these citizens be, be full contributors to Russian cultural progress. This freedom includes the freedom from dangerous and degrading work conditions. Their salary must be decent and their work conditions safe. As men of higher, higher social rank, the factory owners should know better than the put the fellow citizen's life in danger. The higher the position of a man, the, high, the greater the duties of a station is to his country. Nice. Uh, resource extraction would be better to do. We still do army drills again. I want to save our political power a little bit more. Ooh, do we miss this? Ooh. Ooh. West Siberian People's Republic. Ooh, we might want to give it a little bit more time. Maybe we can do that again. Can't remember. It's only November, so we can close out that one too. And build up arms factors would be nice, but whatever. Actually, how much do we have in debt? 55.2% is a kind of a bit. GDP is kind of stagnating. Also, we can do fresh off the presses, which we're doing right now, to get more growth. We can counter pennies to reduce inflation, which is not very high. We can fight poverty, which I do want to try some time eventually. And power things up for grid stuff, which I think we're just going to leave it there for now. Uh, we can really use more money, though. Hmm. Then again, I could use more money in my real life, too, but, you know, whatever. And once this is gone, we hopefully get some more money. Maybe. We'll see. Ah, it's good. Do that. Resource extraction. Cause, just because we can. And two weeks left for that. Not bad. Anything else up here, though? I love doing the free aviators. This one we're good to do. We're going to wait a little bit longer, maybe. Um, ooh, Kemerovo. We could do Kemerovo. Krasnoyarsk. No. Kemerovo, though. They're pretty. They're probably pretty darn strong, too. Ooh. These guys must have just been raided. Free aviators needs a little bit more. Looty booty. Omsk. Not bad. Ooh, build new schools, industrial equipment. Yes, please. A Siberian. Yeah, raid, 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 raid. Black Siberian army. Uh, I don't know if I really want to fight these guys. That's literally an elite division right here too. Yeah, that's who not good to fight. That's at least one booty. Yeah, it's probably best to wait. Oh, a Siberian Black League maybe. Oh, they need some money here. The free aviators. As soon as they get some stuff here, then we can raid them. Then we can do that. That's totally fine with me. Please? Please? Yes? I got better infantry equipment too. Nice. Plus 10% more soft attack? Oh, yes, please. And free the laborers, followed with the duty of the state. Without the common man, there will be no Russian nation. Stroll into his father. The state must be see to all. Uh, all of his children are tended to. 
The presence of social hierarchy need not prevent the spread of books, foods, and public utilities to farmers, soldiers, workers, and academics. All that contribute to the best of their capacity to society shall be rewarded by both a social net to catch them when they stumble, and by access to useful resources to improve themselves when they are ready to do so. And so the great hierarchy is endlessly calibrated and uncalibrated, giving a good life to the masses who support the elite, while making sure that those who deserve it can join the upper class through hard work and self-improvement. Yes, please. Oh, this one too. Nervous Obiesk. Well, they're actually probably relatively strong too. Just get some loot, you stupid ding-dongs. Free the laborers and the duty of the state. We could try it. On how good are divisions? Like, we're not making any more. They are 16 combo, which is not terrible. I would like some, like, recon and logistic companies. Um, support equipment-wise, we are looking okay-ish. This will take... Ooh, we have enough? Yeah, we will have enough for recon. Okay, we can throw that on there. But let's read one more. Bond of the industrialists. Decrease taxes. I don't want to decrease taxes, though. But growth goes up barely. More decentralized. Increase the worker discontent. We'll get more money, though. Ah. The greater duties of the industrialists need not prevent themselves or prevent them from reaping greater reward than simple laborers would. We must ensure that the great capitals of the Republic find joy and success in their work, as long as they fulfill all their social obligations to, of course, the nation. While it would not be prudent to intervene heavily in the nation's economy, we can still do many things to facilitate the life of our business elite. By cutting bureaucracy and making it easy to run business, we can incentivize experimentation and the creation of new businesses. This increased economic dynamicism will stimulate the nation's economy and make us all the much stronger and richer in the long run. President Prado assassinated. Oh boy. Well, unfortunate for him. I think the North is safe again. Mm, no one wants to raid us. Again, we have no loot, so I would expect. Camarovo. Every time I moved in the last episode, we were able to do the free aviators, but... Oh, there goes Guiana. It's only December 4th. We might have a little bit of time. Maybe. Maybe not. Been raided. Not raided. Ooh, Cyprian Black Army, though. Huh. Maybe. I mean, they're really strong, though. They're really flipping strong. As soon as I move, as soon as we move, we'll be able to do the free aviators probably. Which is fine. Or the Euro Military District. I'd rather do these guys. These guys are also elites. I mean, they're quite literally also elites, so screw it, we'll do them too. And if it doesn't go well, then it doesn't go well. You know, things happen. 67.9 bottom went all the way down and shot straight back up. Please, can we have more growth? Inflation is going down, which is nice. Free market capitalism, huh? Free market capitalism is an economic system where private enterprises and businesses are free to operate with few or no restrictions from the government. To elaborate, it means that such things as prices, costs, and wages are regulated by the participants in the market, such as the buyers and the sellers. As such, government oversight and regulation are minimized. Popular among market liberals of all stripes, it has become one of the most in-use systems around the world. Cool. Oh, good. More army reserve training. Good, 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 good. Go the next one, too, as well, because you can. Army sergeants... Uh, this stuff is all cost money, unfortunately. Growth, yes. Don't care how much it costs. And we might do the next one for investing in external investments. Maybe we'll see. Uh, you can try it. If it goes poorly, then oh well. Due to the state. Bond the industrialists. And then, a new renaissance man. Work never ends for the common man, and so work should never end for the elite either. And the population is to tr trust in the social hierarchy. The best of the best must be at the top. Through constant examination and debates, we must perpetually prod the cultural, scientific, and economic elite to improve themselves. To learn more about the wider world, yes, but also learn about Russian traditions, song about the song, and stories of the people. We shall create a new table of ranks for a new nobility of the mind, where the greatest bureaucrats and leaders of our society will constantly seek to demonstrate their learning and practical abilities. We shall forge a generation of renaissance men, apt to tackle the challenges of our republic. Yes. Increases workers, uh, increases education, decreases workers' discontent, slightly increases minimal investment in administrative funding, admin efficiency begins to slowly improve, and Tom's increases voting turnout by 6%. Not bad. Ooh, this actually went down. That's not good. And there you go. Nice. Any more money? Pay debt? Nice. I sound Greek that way. Pay debt. Pay your debts off. And I cho only chose General Nikolai Masolov because he's smoking. Ah, beautiful. Yummy. We only have 7 out of... Huh. troops. Uh, worker concession. 7%. Not bad. Ultimatum from West Siberian People's Republic. That's... These guys, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. 
Also, we do want to get more army XP just because. Um, the way I'm going to set this up. So when we get to the next stage, the regional stage, then economically we're going to be doing some funky stuff here. Not really that funky. Just going to change the division combat width and stuff. But the house elections, seat change. December is plus three. Okay, minus one, 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 one. Lower house on the oven. Good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's get down here. Get enough of uh, organization for our dudes. And we'll, of course, bomb the industrials as well. So, oh, Growth goes down even further. Oh, it actually goes up. But it goes up by, by 0.5, basically. 1%. 1% inflation. God, I wish we did 1% inflation. All right. We, are we good? Yep. Mm, they do have trucks. That's not good. That's actually really bad for us. But it's only f 10 combat with, with support artillery, which is kind of concerning. But still. Well, let's see what happens. You know what? Let's save. Because I like saving very often, especially in front of you guys. Because um, it always shows you to how god-awful the game just lags so hard sometimes. It's like, oh my gosh, please, why do you lag so much? It's because the game has to process so much. But let's try it out anyways. We can't fear some at all, can we? Well, we don't have anyone in the field right now anyways. Oh, we're going to slowly win, hopefully, though. Yeah, it looks like it. Open row. We're going to wait to do this stuff in a little bit just because... Ooh. Uh, limitations of the, of the wards. So we can get some more poverty better, betterness. A limitation of the wards. Dating back to the Tsar's times, the Gulag has been both an instrument for rehabilitation and a tool for punishment, unfortunately. We've inherited a mess of a prison system network from the Soviet Union. Estimates have placed nearly a quarter of the Gulag population into the wrongfully imprisoned category. Yet they continue to toil away under the cold northern sun. How can we live in a just and modern society, and, or even a proper society at all, if our brothers sit behind bars? We need to organize a committee to reevaluate the Gulag system, emancipate thousands of wrongly imprisoned citizens, and define a line between the guilty and innocent, while some preach a Tom's free of prisons, a state like a father knows what's best, but also like a father who not punish his children arbitrarily. Ilyana and Anna. Good job, guys. Keep training. Ilya and Anna, the greatest sibling duo the world over. The heroes Russia needs and deserves. Born to a loving family in the Voronezh, the pair lo lost everything when the Huns invaded our force to flee to the urbane metropolitan city center of Tomsk in central Siberia. The lives they knew have been taken from them, but do they give up? No. Now Ilya and Anna must travel across Tomsk through the thousands of kilometers of forest and tundra, learning of Russia's past, discovering secrets and mysteries of our nation's rich folklore and history, and unveiling the greatest conspiracy known to the people of central Siberia. What is the conspiracy, you may ask? Lurking beneath the shadows of the Tomsk exists a great evil known as a Thule society, who seeks to infiltrate our peaceful democratic state with the German influence and myths of Aryan supremacy. They will serve nothing to undermine Tomsk survival and spiritual enlightenment, going so far as to summon a demons. Only Ilya and Anna, with the help of friendship, teamwork, and friends they meet along in their journey, can prevent disaster from reaching Tomsk, and no doubt all of Russia. Tune into Radio Siberia to catch the action, excitement, and exploration of Russia's magnificent cultures and landscapes. Ilya and Anna, and all the wonderful programming here on Radio Siberia, is brought to you by the Central Siberian Telecommunications Department and various businesses working to provide opportunity and prosperity right here in Tomsk. Thank you for listening. We'll have the budget for a cartoon version as soon as we can reclaim all of Russia. 0.5 billion, basically. Not bad. And the limitations, of course, oh, that we're trying to beeline towards with a lot of political power. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let them, let more people try to rate us, please. It's considerable. I'm not sure that's good or bad. I don't really care. I want more construction speed. Trujillo? Please. 10% is not bad. Slowly improve. I mean, that's not bad either, but... Uh, that's 50 PP. Um, it just... It's, I think it's just even though you get 10% more research speed, but you lose political power, which I do not like. I don't like losing political power. I don't like losing power generally, but that's just me, maybe. And we'll be done. Oh, five days. That's not bad. Uh, this one will be done. Yeah, this will be done. Let's the, war the wards. Yes, please. After that one, it is 60. It's only 63. Holy crap. We need to get some AK-47s. Yeah, I love AK-47s so much. One of my favorite guns of all time. But I hope you guys are having a pretty good day yourself. I'm doing okay. As the time of me recording this, which is... Pretty nice. Reevaluate and rehabilitate. Sometimes the apple falls too far from the tree. There exist those who refuse to be redeemed. Hardline socialists, fascists, and anarchists cannot be allowed to spread their lives into culture society. On the other hand, many prisoners wish to see the light, but the dark ages from which we flee will not allow them. The Gulag Committee, as it has become to know, will reevaluate every prisoner on a case by case basis. 1. Assess the subject's background. 2. Determine whether they have been unjustly punished. 3. Release them immediately and assign them into a rehabilitation program. Or 4. Return them to the Gulag. 5. And 4. Pray for the soul. 5. Pray for the demise and consequent absolution. Nice. Actually, Ooh, I've been doing this incorrectly here a little bit. Um, yeah, the way I want to set this up. Mm, still not bad. Still not bad. We can still mess with this. Yeah. We, we just need a lot of army XP. 
You know what? I'm going to keep doing this one because we need all that army XP. So, The Planet of Storms, a popular new book, is circling through the upper echelons of its society. The Planet of Storms by Alexander Katsentsev is a fictional story by the Russian cosmonauts set in the distant future of 2010, performing the first exploration of the planet Venus. The cosmonauts face many dangerous challenges such as meteorites, carnivorous plants, dangerous aliens, and deadly diseases. The end of the book reveals an extraordinary plot twist that takes both everyday readers and accomplished critics by surprise. The book is widely believed to be influenced by the ideas of major Russian cosmists, thinkers such as Alexander Alexander Bogdanov and Nikolai Fedorov, Konstantsev, has confirmed that he was inspired by these ideas and did include them in his novel. The concept of cosmism is primarily included in the ideas of a new, almost utopian world, one where humanity would have free reign in space with the ability to acquire an infinite amount of resources. Cosmism also focuses not just on science and technology, but also on culture and natural philosophy. Cosmism even includes ideas of bringing the dead back to life and the achievement of human immortality. This Russian philosoph philosophical current has gained much renewed interest in Tomsk with the rise of the modernist Salon and its ideals of a well-ran free society that values knowledge. Well, the book has a share of detractors. It's fiercer critics, slamming it for being scientifically impossible. Many people, both young and old, are complimenting the book for its many twists and thrilling writing. Will it be popular in Tomsk? It unfortunately does not see much popularity beyond the Republic's borders. It seems not many people are interested or not up to purchasing reading books in the world of Russia. However, there have been rumors of a movie adaptation being produced, so Alexander's story might not be quite so over yet. Where's my copy? Good question. Ah, political power. Nothing like it. Scavenge for our looty booties. And which one have we not done yet? I don't think we've done research facilities, have we? No, we have not. They're still going up, but we're going to do it anyways here anyways. Oh, thank you very much. Um, anything down here? External investments yet? Industrial investments? I do like that one. Oh, yeah, here it is. A little bit more money? Ah, oh, we'll take it. Why not? I like the money. We like money. Do we not? Huh. We don't. Have, we never have enough of it. Labor from the chain gangs. Increase growth, but increase inflation by quite a bit. Increases discontent, but get more construction speed. Get more GDP, too. Bureaucrats, yes, this one. Uh, admin efficiency, we want to maximize that one as fast as possible. The Gulag Committee has requested additional officers to oversee the completion of its rehabilitation program. Due to the lack of a workforce trained in the subject area, however, we have been forced to reassign some army officers instead. Expanding the bureaucracy will not be an easy task, but it is critical for ensuring the safe reintegration of prisoners. Several prison guards will also be promoted to overseer, some may even join the army. The experience of commanding squads of workers in brutal winter conditions will help strengthen the resolve of army commanders and prepare them for the eventual liberation of Russia. Yes, please. Also, we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm as well, so there's that. Yep, I don't even care. It's low. Don't care. Close out of that one. Save that. Well, I said save that PP, but oh well. 51.3%, not bad. 0.89. Yeah, as long as it goes up and gets higher, that's all I really care about. Yeah, we don't need more army XP. Why do we. Why does this keep. Uh, we don't need help for now. We're okay. Scavenge for weapons? I mean, we're okay too. Oh, Jerusalem Conference fails. Great. Ooh, military bill. Oh, we have to wait for winter's over. We do have support still, so we don't need that yet as well. Nice. Um, about less than a month, but time with the president. President Lekachev enjoyed reading it or receiving his ministers and advisors for tea once a week. An <clears throat> informal moment to discuss projects and policies in a more casual atmosphere while enjoying what little tea made it to Tomsk. Most pressing for the week had been the issue of prison reforms. Likachov's personal push for aggressive and immediate reforms of the prison system had been surprisingly contentious in the December salons. Few of the prison's political allies had great interest in immediate judicial reforms. Likachov had found himself constantly monitoring their progress and making sure everything was moving along. With respect, Dmitri, it's time to redevelop our industry in urban and rural areas while also speeding along prison release, said Andrei Sinyakski. Our partners in regional administrations and among the mayors worry about a flood of our former convicts disrupting the fragile economic recovery. Irrelevant, Andre. Call in favors, give it a few political appointments, get this done. We've got a manpower shortage and thousands of good citizens are rotting in jail since the CSR days. Since the so some since the Soviet era. The president replied as Prime Minister swirled his cup of tea pensively. We can integrate a lot of freedoms into, or freedmen into our infrastructure initiatives. Give them apartments in the countryside, near highways and train stations, and it will reintegrate them into the nation, and giving them work will save them from destitution. Excellent plan, any of them that has family outside. Try to place them in their family's district, that or offer their family relocation, and keep pressuring the justice departments to process through their backlog. We'll retroactively cancel every wrongly accused citizen's conviction. The president raised his hand to prevent another objection. We do it not because it is easier or expedient, but because it is right. Now would you enjoy another cup of tea? The prime minister nodded. Great! Stability and manpower. Nice. We will spend more money? Uh, let's just one. Labor from the chain gangs. The Gulag Committee has authorized several local businessmen to purchase labor from the camps. <clears throat> a few local mines have been opened, and a fishing dock established on the Tim River. Hopefully, working will motivate the workers and mend their separation from free citizens and serve as an example to the rest of society. 
Two local newspapers have criticized our decision to keep the gulag system, but they are mistaken. We do not wish to condemn men for minor transgressions like the Soviets did. Rather, the gulag serves as a doorway, one that divides a small, dank room that is crime from the outer world where the enlightened reside. In other news, the rehabilitation program has reported moderate success. Many innocents were freed in three facilities constructed for those still in the process of reintegration. The winters are harsh in Siberia. Few wish to forfeit a long or log cabin for a gulag. Here we go again. Screw it. We'll do it again if we have to. As much as I want to kill the free aviators because it's basically free, having a little bit of conflict is not bad. We do, we definitely need it, so. Point eight nine, huh? Hmm. Looting our way forward. Oh! Israel annexes Transjordan. Prime Minister of Israel, Mencham Be Begin. God dang, Israel, you thick. I love how thick Israel can get. Re ah, Zionists. Huh. Interesting. Oh, and you're Lebanon as a puppet. So what happened down here? Uh, it looks like the Japanese one, maybe? Yeah? Yeah? Bureaucrats from the guards. And we now have 20 army XP. Shouldn't be 25. Hmm. Are we ready? Eh, no, but... Oh, let's go in anyways. Let's see what happens. Roads from the prison infrastructure. Tom's gives all land of inspiration on wonder. Our statues as a Athens of Russia can only be held if we maintain the tradition of exchange and peaceful debate. We attract thinkers, poets, men, and women from the rest of Siberia to share their ideas. The Gulag Committee has drafted the plan Serie Dorogi, which calls for the use of prisoner labor to pave ways or pave roads between the major cities. Petrol patrols will ensure the bandits stay off the highways, and envoys will be sent into neighboring states to free invite free thinkers. No country can succeed without a proper infrastructure network, and who better to work during the blazing day and freezing the night than those who have a debt to society to repay? The sight of men working hard to rejoin society will impress on every citizen the fairness and justice of our republic. Costs a little bit of money, but that's alright. Anything worthwhile costs money. Spoils of war? Beautiful. Pay debt. Hey, we're back to the same amount earlier. Point four nine four. I thought that was the same as earlier, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was. Good job, guys. Get the smoker. Smoke it up. We have one loop. Please, someone raid me. Come on, please, please. I want to defend. I want more army XP. Because my goodness, do we need it? Because what we're going to do with this group... Um, it would take one, two, three, four, five. It just depends on how much money we want to save. Five times five is 25. Honestly, I don't mind making these guys like... Just make them like 20 combo for now. Because TNO is still in the old operating system for uh, how we used to do things. Point two is probably going to go up since we added two more battalions to each group. Yep, point zero five more billion. It's fine. Whatever. Once we get to the next stage and we have like a bunch more money to work with, it's fine. It'll be fine. Good job, guys. Good job. And the mark on the misery. When the Gulag Committee was founded, the Gulag population totaled in the thousands. Now, nearly a third have been freed, a quarter in the process of re-education, and the rest are put to good use. The committee reports that this is a massive success, not only in terms of efficiency, but also public relations. The peasants of Tomsk no longer look at the distant camps as death chambers, but rather as be beacons of hope in the dark world. Some governors have capitalized on the success by comparing our Gulags to the justice systems of other warlords, whereas less civilized men execute fellow Russians for even minor transgressions, or so we've been told. Tomsk showers mercy upon all of its children. A new popular joke said that people from the south flocked into Tomsk steal some crops and then smile when they are arrested. Priority will begin to prove from the Siberian... Oh, God. Oh, no. It's, it's over here. Siberian Black Army. Yeah. Well, dash not good. Now we're still at eight production units. Not bad. Since we're spending army XP anyways, we might as well make our motorized maybe a little better as well, perhaps? Yeah, that's not enough. That's not thick enough. I don't mind if it costing now more in this stage. I really don't mind it. Just because I want to make sure that we win. That's the most important thing to do in this stage is to just win. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit. Military expansion. No. Not there yet. It's not quite spring. Well, it's, getting, it's not quite spring yet, but we'll get there. And it'll attribute to loot, or the rate doesn't take it away from us, anyways. Well, if y'all could hurry the heck up, that'd be great. Oh, there we go. Now we can do this. Does that change the focus tree? I hope not. Or we just go straight to war with these guys. Okay. Or we just go straight to war with them. If we can't defend against these guys, we just go straight, literally just straight to war. That's not bad, actually. 
My god, the game is so laggy. Huh. Yeah, we're gonna have to go straight to war. Um, so we'll do. We won't back down so easily. They'll attack us. Oh, but it's in 21 days. Oh, god dang it. It's the Green Black Army. Operation Tivyordia Ruka. Shlapshnikov nursed a couple of bad copies as aides ran back and forth in the war ministry. Any moment now, President Dmitry Likachev was expected to call and give Operation Teodoria Ruka his official approval. Tivdyordia Ruka, most recycled plans for the initial attempt by the CSR to crush the anarchist uprising all those years ago. It had not been a bad plan. A rapid push to cut in half the territory occupied by anarchist rebels and lay siege to the capital of Kansk, where the Siberian Black Army's main HQ could, have be, could be found. Karaylov's initial push had come close in do doing his job. Andrei's betrayal ensured that there would be no follow-up offensives, and the Black Army's success in routing the Krylov's heavy guns from the outskirts of Kansk. The final death of the CSR was determined. The anarchists had fought hard, and they had fought well, but this time they would not face an exhausted Republican army. Information. Sources on the SBA are hard to come by. The Republic's intelligence agency has still not determined how exactly the initial revolt had been sparked. Nor have figured out who among the SBA leaders, Stepanov and Siuda, really spoke for the army and its men. Shapshnikov hoped that in the battle, the truth would become clear and the Republic would finally understand its foe enough to destroy. A phone call. Even before answering, the marshal knew it was time to come. And let's read one more. Infrastructure would be nice. Oh, let's do this one first of all. Russia the vast, beautiful land. Who can deny the light of our sunflowers or the age of her trees which have seen countless generations live and die? Bountiful Mother Earth must be protected so that we may have her blessing in the final struggle, lest the land is defeated, as the old regime was. Therefore, the legacy of our proud nation obliges us to defend the motherland. We must not poison our rivers, cut the forests, or burn the steps. Workers have to defend the earth with the same diligence and bravery as that of our soldiers. Have our forefathers, who had, had to work with wooden hatchets and beasts of burden, could preserve Russia, then so can we. Only when the bear can stroll through a meadow unharmed, then drink pure water from the lakes, may we consider ourselves truly civilized. Well, everybody, I've already gone ahead and defeated the Siberian Black Army. They were actually war with the People's Revolutionary Council, as you can see. I just got the Bronsk, and we just take a Konsk. It wasn't that bad, especially when they're in a two-front war. It's actually a lot easier than I thought. And actually, when we had the whole border thing here with them, we actually still won. So, overall, not bad. I do apologize for not showing you, but I've defeated them before. Sometimes they're really difficult, but this time it was okay. The open road. Throughout a republic, roads old and new snake through the landscape, uniting her people. The peasant who pushes a cart of goods to the village's market is not much different from the freight train feeding a distant industrial complex with ore and old coal. We must continuously develop the veins and arteries of a republic to give the people the freedom to attend to their business as they see fit. Assistance unconstrained are the basis of progress for this Russian civilization. All the state has to do is give the population the tools it needs to create communities and businesses alike. And actually, we still need to integrate Konsk and integrate or put down anarchy. Integrate, yes, and that's why we need to save some of our PP. Very, very good. Overall, not bad. Um, yeah, I do apologize once again that I didn't show you this. It's just, it really wasn't that bad. I'm mean, with 20 combo with infantry divisions that are actually not bad. Especially compared to everyone else. Feeling okay about it. Definitely feeling okay about it, but... I'm sure we're going to get attacked relatively soonish, but a path to Leso Sibirsk? Mm, we could do that. The harvest of industry. Let's do this one first. The harvest of industry. Although our deals are pretty pure. Having the best interests of the Russian peasant in mind, there exists those who wish to see us die. We are much like the old empire, surrounded on all sides. However, unlike that empire, we have an overwhelming advantage. The Russian spirit, free at last to evolve as it pleases. There's no need to direct investment, as the failures before us have done when the average peasant wisely chooses to work in the factory or for the betterment of a society and the ultimate defense of the motherland. Next season, we will not only be harvesting wheat, but also will be gathering guns, armor, artillery, whatever is necessary to ensure Russia's future. We're confident in the abilities of the factory workers, who toil just as much as the peasants in the fields, working towards that light in the far future. Your old military district? Let's see what we can do about these guys now. Not bad. And how much political power do we get every day? Almost one. Not enough. Of course, we're putting down uh, anarchy as well. Shkola, huh? Alright. Kore, People's Revolutionary Council. That's not bad. I want to wait to do that one, though. Um, Kamarovo, Krasnoyarsk. Actually, Novosibirsk. I want to probably Novosibirsk. Propose war plan de antes. It's time for the Republic to turn its attention towards the separatists of the so-called Novosibirsk. The Pokrushkin led junta must be defeated if our, if our Republic is to survive. Are we there yet? Yes, but we need to get some more organization first. A path to Leso Sibirsk. It is an important secondary city, yet the infrastructure linking it to our capital and military garrison is underwhelming. Thankfully, an opportunity affords itself to us in that old Achinsk Makalakovo railway passes through the area. Getting the old railway tracks uh, to modern standard, connecting the north south axis and east west one, and accompanying it with a better highway will be more than sufficient to integrate the area's industry and military positions. We must not forget the Republic's hinterland, especially as a foreign threat such as Krasnoyarsk's junta as well as a cursed anarchist threat in our nation. End of the revolt. 
In the end, victory in the field had been broken the back of the famed Siberian Black Army. The anarchist soldiers had fought long and hard, when their situation grew impossible, however. The SBA had lost men as fast as melting spring snow. The Tomskian offensive, combined with the Shapshnikov's suggested land reforms and food delivery, had done much to peel away communes from the Black Army. The surrender of General Stepanov and his men had rendered the Black Army remnants into a determined insurrection. Tomsk generals urged the men on, isolating hostile communes and slowly forming a grid of pacified territory within the region. The capture of Councilor Ciuda was the Republican Army's highest priority, a culmination to the final campaign to eradicate anarchist ideology. The dedicated anarchist ideologue remained defiant to the end, unwilling to accept the offer of amnesty. Ciuda so died with his last companions, cornered in a forest safe house in the north. The men who had fought to their last bullet, refusing to grant their Republican foes any legitimacy. The martyrdom of Ciuda echoed through the former free territory, and for a moment it seemed the insurrection might spark anew, but as loved as the Councilor had been, the commons throughout the region were exhausted by a decade of conflict. The Republican army took care to listen to the grievances, and brought food for the poor, as perhaps their leader would have cast his judgment on them for willingly accepting servitude to the invading state. The peasants hoped for the counselor would have found in himself the strength to forgive them. General Stepanov's trial was due to begin soon. He is expected to argue that he merely wanted to protect local citizens from endless violence, as he had all other captive, captured separatists in Tomsk. Rumors abound of a reduced sentence meant to reward him for agreeing to the end of the, to ending the bloodshed and give back to the eastern territories a sense of normalcy. The public forgives, but of course it does not forget. Oh, shoot up higher, please, baby, please. And then, please go lower here, too. <laughs> not bad. And we can do this. It's not activated war plan recently. That's fine. Uh, I still want to kill off Nova Sibirsk. They got slightly larger, and then I'll come robot, which is not good. Oh, and we do have some research we can do as well, and still have a small smidgen of coffee, too. And at this point, I will just save the rest of that, of uh, the land doctrine, for whenever we get more blueprints, which would be very, very good. Train anything here, scavenge for loot. Capacity. Mm, ooh, harvest industry, nice. Construction speed would be very nice, though. Resource extraction stuff, of course. Look at all this lag. Oh my goodness. So, if we do this one. Okay, we'll do one more. Why not? Extra investments. Oh, I'd love to do that one, but we can probably wait for now. Ah, path up to the source of the bisk. Let's go up a little more, just in case we need it in the future. And bond this out. Wisdom is a source of strength, and learning is a source of wisdom. We've learned from the old rule that the more one tries to command society, the more one kills its very soul. Shall we not apply that lesson? Free the businessmen, unchain the capitalists, reassure that investors that the red menace shall not return, a southern factory sponsored entirely by free men. will be completed in a few months' time, soon it will be joined by a host of new in industries. Much like a forest grows out of an acorn, a model for the future one day. We'll sweep through Russia like a snowstorm through a flat plain, driving out those who naturally see the motherland bleed. Naturally, environmental and safety regulations will be place in place to ensure the forest of seals grows in a correct manner. This forest, of course. Oh, and Destrux Priest gets better. Taxes decrease, but get more liquid reserves, increase GDP and growth, as well as inflation will grow, but that's okay. How many more days? Oh, one day's left. Ah, we can wait. The new row. It had once been a difficult task for Tom's to go to, uh, from Tom's to Lesser Sobiersk. A small city known for its forestry industry had been tied to other regions of the Central Siberian Republic by railroads. With most of the former republic now occupied by the separatist rebels, the city of Lesosobirsk had been cut off from its capital. A patchwork of freight rail lines had hastily been redirected to carrying wood back to the capital through large detours in the Siberian forest. For the average traveler, however, the fastest path was still a simple two-lane road to and fro this industrial city, unfortunately. The road itself has always been a little more than a dirt track, rendered unusable in the autumn and spring by mud. But that had always been, one to, been the one sent by the lesso Sobiesk branch of the company to look for the business partners in the capital. The direct path was always the fastest, and when it was available, of course. <clears throat> Sitting in a freight train for two days in a row had been Pavel's least favorite part of this job when the Rasputitsa made travel over land by truck too difficult. Now, though, the businessman had the opportunity to try the new road. The road was smooth and enjoyable. Pavel was surprised to find himself drifting out to sleep, the vehicle traveling without hitting any potholes on the fresh pavement. He could definitely get used to this. Such a simple thing. Such great, great results. Eh, we can do that one, but like I said, I want to wait a little more. 63.6%, not bad. What's over here? Oh, the GUI. Oh, the Decembers are... We're, we're murdering them all. So nice. I'm glad we took out the Black uh, Army as well, just because they don't get any votes. Huh, <laughs> no votes for you. 3% growth, not bad too. 0.28 billion. Oh, what's this one? Oh, yeah. December's popularity. Oh, I forgot about doing stuff here too. Uh, lower house seats. Three. Okay, we can move up. Oh. Oh, now no, no, we can move it. Upper house seats. Oh, that's not good. Um, honestly, we probably need more support in the upper house eventually. Uh, ruling Salon has greater authority than 10. Decreases December Salon authority. Greatly increases upper house support. 
Hmm. Consolidate rule. Well, we need more authority, right? Yeah, we'll do this one first. 29.9% goes up to 26. That's not bad. This definitely got a little lower. Ooh. Not bad. Hmm. Why not? Hey, now we can. Yeah, Novus Obiosk is going to have to die. Operation to Antilles. Marshal Shapshnikov, in his chief role of the Republic's army, stood in a crowded room. Tom's top brass, as well as a few high-ranking civilians, had been assembled to discuss the final steps of the prepared invasion of the Federation of Novus Obiosk and Altai. Routine Tom's going to target to a mixture of planes and woodland. Greatest obstacle of all would be the Ob River. The city of Novus Obiosk itself was exposed on the right flank of the river, but any commander worth their salt would keep large reserves west of the river. Ready to attempt to relieve any besieged city, an important secondary target was the Altai region and its capital, Barnall. At the moment, the southern part of the Novus Obiosk Altai Federation, Barnall, and the southern have been some of the best farmland of the CSR, as well as a crucial railway junction. Recapturing would be a great morale coup and perhaps would fatally weaken the opposition. Some generals droned on explanation to an envoy from the Ministry of War. Shapshnikov tried to pay attention. His heart wasn't in it, though. It served with Pokrushkin, Novus a strong man. The enemy officers were darn traitors, yet they were also darn fine commanders. Neither the city of Novosibirsk nor the plains of Altai would be seated easily. Over land and in the skies, the Siberian Falcon and his associates wage a determined opposition. If they must fall, the Republic is to live. Oh. Oh yeah, we were training these guys. Nice. They take Manila? Oh boy. Oh boy. Anything else we really care about? Nope. 65.2%? Well, it could be better. 3% is not bad, though. Very nice. They're so if they kill these guys off too, I'm, I would not be opposed to that. That just saves us time. They have one production unit. Wow. We definitely have the most uh, divisions here, though. Bond the South. And the legacy of Pasternak. Old Russia was not killed by the Germans. It had slain itself, drank poison when it rejected its roots in favor of ruthless modernity and cynical Marxism all those years ago. But our new Russia is wise and prepared. From glittering fields of snow, we emerge, illuminating the darkness, fling, uh, flinging a light into the future. Tomsk is the only place in Russia where men can truly be free. Free to express their ideas, fulfill their desires, and shape society into a wholly different beast than it was a decade ago. Progress never stops. We'll guide Russia as Pasternak would have. We will retake the old boards and erect academies on the graves of the Hun. Even now, the scientific foundation of Tomsk is secure, achieved with the help of not exploitation of Russians. Every day, intellectuals flock to us, seeking refuge amidst the glens of the north, carrying with them the tools of modernity. We are an inextinguishable beacon of civilization, and we alone have the means and ideology to rebuild Russia. Oh, yes, we do. I'll strike fast. Oh, do we need this stuff? This was, we, didn't have this one, we did not have this at all when I went to war with these guys, so... Protect the industry. Oh, that's interesting. More cap. Crush your regiments. More attack. You... That's not bad. 20. Because this one... Uh, you lose political power. You get slightly better military training. Policy effectiveness. Plus 20 for 35. Or you go shock and awe. You get 20 for... And this one's 35. So you save 15 political power. You don't you get 5 less. And you get more base war support. Okay, I like that one. That's pretty good. Well, that's pretty darn good. We're going to have to go with that one. Oh, good sense base. And capture it if you want to that. Please go ahead. Yay! Just go to Novosibirsk and get some more army XP if you possibly can. Not bad. If you want to be this one too, please go ahead. To the skies, my friends. To the skies. Hey, happy October, everybody. Soon, I think if certain Deutschland is going to be in a civil war. Oh boy, who could have seen that one coming? But maybe that's just a feeling I have. Who knows? Maybe it's just all wrong. Go, my boys. Go, go, go. This is one of the easiest times I've ever taken out Novosibirsk. The Lobster War ends. She plays Iberia again. Hmm. We've lost about a thousand, twelve hundred versus four thousand. Not bad. And my friends, we have one. Integrate. Integrate. Siberian Black Army. Black League. You know what? Let's risk it. Screw it. We're going in. And we should get to a couple events here too. Build up the bases. Oh, that's not bad. Trial of the Secessionists. Into a political system? Uh, do we really want that? Ooh, that's not bad, too. Reintegrate the Crownlands. Kemerovo. Oh, both these will be... All these guys will be integrated. Uh, we're already integrating these guys anyway, so that's, okay, that's fine. Trial of the Secessionists? Might as well do that one first. Why not? And do we have enough for... Regional integration. Ooh. Scavenge for loot. Maybe not. Reopening the coal mines? Why not? We'll do that one first, and then we'll do this other stuff. Vaznesensi? Vaznesenye. Get 
the raid going, maybe. We'll see. Minus .06. That's pretty darn strong. I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty darn strong. Going up by six a month. Not bad. I'd say that's pretty decent. As the game is going to lag very, very soon, just because of uh, a certain Mr. Hitler dying. Oh, oh, oh. Bless his little heart. He's going to be dying soon. When's the next time we get uh, research done? Oh, in about a week. Ah, not bad. And, oh, and here comes the lag. Usually around the end of October, uh, this Germans just go explode, which is fun. Except waiting, so yeah, the whole lag, it's definitely gotten better over the whole, overall, though, in my opinion. It's not great, especially when the German Civil War fires, and then England has its Civil War, and then South African War starts, and then the Franco Burgundian War starts. Uh, how fast can the Burgundians win? They are like a slow flood. Then again, the game is really laggy, so. The flooding level isn't as fast as it could be, but. Oh, and Austin has a Civil War. Actually, I see he plays Austin, too. Oh, there goes Paris. Not bad. Marseille has fallen. Hans Spada, of course, assumed control of Germania. But what else is new? And there they go, too. Not bad. Better already. There we go. Scanter loot. Ah, the end of the Federates. The man who began the downfall of the CSR, and the man who had put it in its, uh, who put it in its final nails. The child Vasily Shushkin. Alexander Pokrushkin and all their associates of the Federation of Novosibirsk and Altai were packed courtrooms. Or they saw them. The Federates had been the most powerful breakaway faction of the Republic, and now their defeat had brought back to the fore pain of the secession all those years ago. Both of the main defendants appeared unrepentant before the court. Vasily Shushkin decried the difficult condition in Altai region, where peasants were overworked, and to feed the whole of the Central Siberian Republic. Had it not been the right to march for the rights, when accused of leading violence against the central government, Shushkin retorted that the Republican army had been sent in to crush the protest violently, forcing the citizens to arm themselves. Likewise, Pokrushkin was unmoved by the prosecution's accusations. Him a traitor? Hmm. Uh, as a military officer, he had always known his duty to the common man. When the stalemate against the Agoda's Red Army remnants had pushed the CSR to the famine, had the people not been right to call for peace, had their desperate p pleas uh, deserved to be drowned under the crackle of gunfire, their arguments failed to sway either the crowd or the judge. As military officers and, and as regional politicians, the accused failed to restore common order in the jurisdiction. Instead, they invited the specter of civil war and plunged central Siberia into chaos. Unrepentant, these so-called Federates proceeded to build a corrupt autocratic regime. No doubt had these Federates had their way, Russian democracy would be buried and its corpse used to fertilize corrupt private interests. For this, this court condemns accused and will seek sentences of life in prison, where the accused will have time to reflect on the crimes. Justice, of course, prevails. We need to get the Crownlands? Well, let's do this one first. I don't want to deal with those Crownlands. Ah, oh, I forgot about Africa too. Yeah, we need more authority, more popularity. Oh, not bad. Oh, big tribute. Oh, thanks, guys. Mm. We need more upper upper house seats. Economy? Yes. Ooh, over a billion. That's not good. But 21, 22.1%. That's pretty darn nice. That's actually that's, that's pretty good. Oh, we actually have a surplus, too. Look at that. Oh. Oh, our GDP went down. Oh, we're barely growing. Oh, that's not good. 0. 0.26. 0. 0.26. 0. 0.8. If we can get rid of the debt to GDP ratio, because I've got some good ideas for this. We're going to be spending a lot of money later on in this campaign, so 34 army XP is not bad. Obviously, it's not enough yet. It's never enough. Just to be honest with you, it's just never enough. But that's okay. Let's keep scavenging for loot and reintegrate the Crownlands. South African War, nice. Pretty good. And I'm going to kill these guys off, kill those guys off, kill off Oroshi as well. But I'll we'll have to work and wait for that. Hmm. I probably want to kill off Krasnoyars first, just because they're probably going to be the most difficult out of the remaining groups here. Mm. Our commanders have put in the final touches of Operation Korai, the proposed invasion of Krasnoyars, currently occupied by traitors who style themselves as a Krasnoyarsk. Their capture of this austerity will help us at attain our strategic goals, of course. What? No one wants to raid us? What's wrong with all y'all? That's not good. I just want to pay off our debts. Inflation 3.5%, which does kind of suck, but oh well. Africa Shield intervenes, coup in there. Oh, Africa has finally solidified itself a little bit better because of this one. I mean, this would take so much to take off. Like, uh, and we do need a militia division too, so I'm just probably convert these guys to militia anyways. Um, hmm. Take it off, take, take like four of these things off. 
Uh, elites are nice and all, but I just don't really feel like using them in this campaign. Two, three, twenty-five. And I'm going to convert these guys to light infantry as well. There you go. Because then you guys can do that. We'll take off the artillery. We'll take off the recon eventually too, so... Oh, more factories? Nice. Um, go down to three. Go, you know what? Just go to 15 and then go there too. Make it some tanks. Good. Make it some anti air. Make it some APCs. Basic artillery is nice. Actually, very, very nice. Oh, we're looking very, very good here, actually. Alright, we'll also have a little more loot. And good. We'll go with workers next. Air bases, crownlands, very, very nice. Sembris. Uh, can get some more authority here. We've got a lot of approval. There we go. 32%, nice. Max out popularity. Well, maybe not max out, but quite a bit. 25%, 29%, 32%, 29.6. Humans are doing really poorly here. Not bad. Not bad overall. Happy December, everybody. 0.28, a little bit more growth this time. Went up and then down and then all the way up, and then it goes we up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Still over a billion is too much. Dissolving the principal team. The loss of Kemrovo and its surroundings have been one of the final nails in this Central Siberian Republic. When General Krylov had gone mad and emerged as self styled, Rorik the second. The industrial assets of the Kemerovo region, as well as its vast coal mines had slipped from Tom's grasp. Recapturing the region with much diminished Republican army would have been the height of folly. Some of the CSR's best troops had gone east with Krylov, and those men that had not left for Krasnorsk soon formed the core of Krylov's new royal army. Now the region has been liberated. Even as the Republic uh, soldiers enter the streets of the enemy capital, our bureaucrats are already at, at work implementing Shapshnikov's post-war ideas. A recapturing industrial complex had seen its damage assessed, as potential outputs added to the tally. All this info will be put to good use for the future economic planning, equally important in the telling or capturing capture soldiers and surrendering garrisons. It is hoped that many of the men are not very ideological, and can thus be reintegrated into our army. These elements of questionable loyalty will be placed in front of frontline duty, allowing them to keep their jobs while expanding their military capacity. All this will take some time. Trials for local officials, military commanders, who join the Krylov's mutiny, will be a complicated affair and expose deep wounds left by the fall of the Central Siberian Republic. With malice towards none, we must set to work to try and tying back together the fate of Kemro's residents to the fate of our great republic. Let's get to work! Yes. I'm ready to raid the fate of the Mad King. After a triumph of the so-called Principal of Kemerovo, our men have captured the Mad King Rorik II, formerly General Krylov of the Central Siberian Republic. The poor unfortunate had returned to Tomsk not as a conquering hero, but as a prisoner of war, his fate uncertain. For many in the capital, Krylov deserves the fate of every captured separatist. After a trial to establish his degree of guilt, Krylov shall serve a long sentence in prison where the remnants of his fractured psyche are able to think about the blood he shed and the hungers for power. His hunger for power. Others, however, hold a more nuanced perspective on the disgraced general. Krylov had a long battle depression after the annihilation of the Soviet Union and the death of so many of its people. Sent east to fight for the general, for the, not general, but Central Siberian Republic. His defeat by the anarchists and the treachery of his officers in Krasnorsk has been sent, has sent the, uh, Krylov's mental health into the final freefall. The pa faction pleading for his clemency, led by Krylov's former friend, Marshal Shapshnikov, has published in an open letter requesting Krylov be placed in a mental institution. There, the former Mad King might hopefully see his mental health improved and some of his megalomania removed. The debate so the, about this issue has been fierce. Many express sympathy for Krylov's plight, so to cry the general's failures, and argue that it's unknown if the general's truly, truly mad or invented his Rurik persona, persona to justify his secession. The people desire to know which way the president's office leans on the issue. Mercy is not weakness. Place him in a mental hospital. Krylov must be tried for his crimes. Mercy is not weakness. Eh, we'll get to that one. The Petrov Salon ultimatum of stability. Anatoly Petrov had not known what to expect when his unit was ordered, along with the other elements of the army, into the so-called Mad King's domain in and around Kemerovo, but it was not what he eventually received. The Mad King's offensive failures and eventual madness during the anarchist uprising had significantly sapped the Republic's strength. <clears throat> And a seizure of territory to remove the important resources deposits that had to be recovered. And, as his mother had long reminded him, the central December's concept of the removal of absolute monarchies such as the Mad King and that had established seemed a noble concept. Without representation, how could a people be content? Yet as Anatoly's unit entered the city, he had seen people who were exactly that. The Mad King's children could not have been more different. The daughter a cold autocrat, but the son of a man with ideals. 
apparently dedicated to improving the lot of so many Kemerovo citizens, enough so that they could and did fight for him in large numbers and die for him in equally large numbers as well, finding a representative republic for a monarch. Anatoly was having a hard time processing that fact, constitutional government, the inherent stability of which his mother had long praised and failed these people utterly when the anarchists rose, but the king had not, at least as far as they were concerned, and if that December's concept had proven to be non-universal, which others were similarly so? He had no longer saw how he could trust any of the tenets of Lekichov's adherents. He didn't know how he would tell his mother that. Is there actually any value in monarchy? It depends on who you ask. And it seems like everyone's killing themselves across the globe, which is a great thing. Because that ultimately means there's less people to disagree with. Mm. Oh, your old military district, maybe. We'll see. I'd love to write them again, but we'll see. And it sucks that we have no focus, no focuses to do. But oh, house elections. December's won it by six. God dang, son. God dang. Minus two, minus two, minus two. December's we lost two. Okay, but we lost a little bit of support in the lower house, which does suck. Uh, I'll process thirty-one, fifty. It goes to A and C. Oh, look at that. Thirty-one point three, thirty-two percent, sixteen twenty-seven. Nice. And actually, now. We got a lot of support for the Decembrists. Not much in Kemerovo. Turnout's really bad on here, too. We like it white here, because that's our faction. Huh. Oh, anything else here? Ah. Krasnoyarsk. I want to go to War of the Omsk. Um, these guys are killing each other down there. That's fine. I just want to raid, man. Why can't we raid? But, mm, in 21 days, it was really should council. Kodai, yes. Operation Korai. In front of the assembled generals and commanders, a black board had been installed upon which the words Operation Korai had been written. The invasion to capture, uh, recapture Krasnoyarsk from former Central Siberian Republic Colonel Andreev and his acolytes. Shapshnikov detailed the opposition, as well as strategic concerns for the invasion. The mutineers had chosen location well upon the betrayal of General Korailov, the rogue military units that seized the city of Krasnoyarsk on the Yen Yenisei River. Recapturing the city would be a dis dicey proposition for the failing CSR, forcing an attack upon both sides of the mighty river. The mutineers' hijacking of heavy guns meant to rot the anarchists had ensured that their position was all but un unassailable. For forcing Krylov to retreat in disgrace, the modern Republican army would be a far better match for Krasnoyarsk, yet caution remained of the utmost importance. <clears throat> After giving his presentation and listening to subsequent discussions, Shapshnikov's thoughts went to Andreev. Personal disdain had no place in a commanding officer's, officer's mind. The Marshal of the Republic, however, hated Andreev and his mutineer. Not only had they cost the Republic dearly in blood and treasure, their betrayal had done much to send Krylov into a downward spiral. Not long, too, after his old friend had declared himself a king and began his mad reign, Shapshnikov knew that, his, that as long as he and his men kept their calm, the rogue province would be recaptured. Only then would justice against the traitors take place. We will silence the traitors. And hopefully raid more, because my god, I want to raid. So badly. Oh, look at that. I love how it goes curve. I love curves, man. Curves are so nice. Goes up and then down. It goes, Whoa. oh, that's so curvy. I enjoy it sometimes too much. Nice. It, it's not good for growth, but got quite a bit of inflation, but hopefully it'll be keep going down. We can always lower suppression manually by, at the cost of growth, but we'll get there eventually. But happy 1964, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great year. And my, So basically my goal for this is this is our garrison template. We're going to convert all divisions to this template eventually just so that uh, we save a lot of money. Like, that's literally all we're going to do at that stage. Ooh, thank you for taking the Roshio. Prince Shokla? The commander of the Republic are ready to launch Operation Shokla. The final destruction of the People's Revolutionary Council, so more honorable than your good as Eastern Remnants. Yet Vasilevsky's Red Army units must still be defeated if the Republic is to recapture all Central Siberia. Four days. There's no point in doing this one yet. We'll get, well, eh. Ooh, they're looking really bad. Holy crap, they're looking not good. They have 19,000 manpower, though. Quite a few factories. Quite a few production units. The helicopter division like normal. Tank division like normal. And can we go in like normal? We should be able to. Um, a little bit of struggling here is not a bad idea either. They're not looking super strong here. Alexei Pestorev, huh? Should be able to win without too much difficulty. And my god, do we have a lot of manpower. I love it. Keep all those men. We love men. Blitz Krasnoyarsk. We get attack bonus. We remove... I mean, do we get a reward for that? Because I don't want to spend political power if we don't have to. I mean, I just do not want to. Let's go up there. Good. Yeah, they have two divisions. If you're worried about the junction, please go right ahead. A boon, to be sure. More speed, less supply consumption, better construction. Plus 15%. Holy crap, that's actually really nice. Um, Can we actually win down here? I don't know if we actually will be able to, but we could try it. Why not? If we lose, then we lose, but whatever. You know, I'll save just in case. If we lose, then we're not going to lose. But, you know, 
We want to make sure we actually do really well here, right? I think we're all right. Cool. All right, we only have six army XP, which does suck. A billion in deficit, which sucks as well. Oh, boy. But the surplus is looking really nice. Barely any growth, but that's pretty normal for us. Scavenge for loot. Prepare a raid. Enjoy ourselves. Hopefully the Polish win, maybe. Ooh. Oh, develop industries. Oh, look at that. Get a production unit. Yeah. Purge traders? Yeah. Go and do that, too. And I know I could be doing more of this legacy of the Siberian plan, but it's all green here, which is actually really nice. Factory output is pretty good. Construction speed 10% boost is nice. Uh, the other ones are okay. They're not super, super important, so not super worried about that. See what we can do. Because some of these divisions, they're not that strong. Okay, that division's really bad. This division's not good either. Uh, oh. Okay. Paid tribute, huh? I'm okay with that. 0. 0.422. Thank you so much. Less than a billion? Oh, so good. Well, we don't even have to train these guys either, so... Alright. And then Chocolat, they're next. So, we just have to wait, which does kind of suck. For 21 days, we get more army XP gain. Plus, more war support too, which is actually pretty nice. And then we'll be able to do more agricultural methods. Maybe schools. Actually, we're doing schools quite quite nicely. Agricultural methods is not bad for more consumer goods. Minus 0.1 for poverty rate change. Oh my goodness. Um, Six... Of course, we want to do industrial equipment. Power tools. It's not great. It's just really not great. This is much better to get down to, though. So much better. Someone please try to raid us. Then again, who can raid us? Baratia? They're busy at war. Uh, Pavlodar is dying. Tomsk might be able to raid us. Uh, all, everyone around here might be able to raid us. God, I don't want to kill off the free aviators so badly. Less than a billion in debt? God. I can't imagine having that much debt. Of course, we still have warlord development as well. Actually, does this go up? With uh, how much that we have? 30%. Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. If we do this one... Was it going to pop up again? Hold on. Oh, it's just lagging super hard. That's why. 30%. Increases state GDP by 3%. 3% and 1%. Increases liquid reserves by 30% of our GDP, totaling 1.8 billion. Okay, we'll do it one more time. 3.8... Well, we just paid off the debt. Hmm... Well, if that's the case, we can go max it out. We still get a deficit. You get you get quite a bit more growth, not a ton. Um, I want a little bit of a surplus still again. Uh, holy crap! That's actually I was, I was really wow. We have no debt. We still have a surplus. We're spending a little bit more for more growth. External investments. That's actually really cool. I never knew that. So you actually might want to wait to do external investments until you're close to ending the first stage for any warlord. Get those external investments because you'll get a lot of money based on your uh, GDP, you know, a certain percentage. Now, uh, let's do schools. So that's actually really nice. I didn't realize that. That's actually really kind of, that's a little gamey, but you know what? I kind of like that. Trial of the Cross Norris. Click. The trials were held in front of the limited crowd. The Novo Sobieski and Altai Federation were seen in Tomsk as the great betrayers of the CSR. The mutineers of Krasnorsk were the Republic's undertakers. To avoid heckling crowds, the capital's police held a close watch on the specters as the treason trials were underway. Andrei and his accomplices defended their action by declaring the central government had lost the people's support. After being routed by anarchist rebels, the thought of regrouping for another attempt to subdue the desperate population had broken the soldiers' morale. Their active rebellion against General Krylov had been met to save Krasnorsk and the Eastern Territories from further bloodshed. Unfortunately for them, uh, intercepted transmissions and letters that, that have predated the mutiny have been saved by fleeing CSR soldiers and brought back to Tomsk. There, Andrei's duplicity had revealed itself. The coup had been a long planned and organized by the top down. Ambitious military officers had lied their, to their men about Krylov's intentions. Once Krasnorek had been captured, Ajunt had ruled the fallen province, depriving the people of their freedoms. For this treason against the Republic and her people, the judges sentenced the mutinous leaders to long prison sentences. Never again would armed men impose their diktats upon the population. An ignoble fate for ignoble men. Nice. And these guys are still pretty good. Like, 20 combat is not bad. Obviously, I like them a little better. We're going to get logistic companies eventually as well. But this is... Oh, now we have a little bit more debt. It is what it is. Oh, uh, that's the case. Here. A little more growth. Or a little more surplus. That's fine. It's fine. Whatever. I'm not going to lower all the way down again again. Welcome to Dolina Nochi. A surprising new radio series has been developed by a collective of Bastelar producers in this town of Streslevoy. 
entitled Welcome to Dolina No Chi has become one of the most divisive entertainment products to have come, come over our airwaves in recent years. The serial is set in the small town of Dolina, uh, Dolina No Chi, a former mill town of the Obi River, which is now centered around a bicycle factory. It follows the daily going-ons of the town's inhabitants, Boris the foreman, Daria the school teacher, Anoia and Artyom, the factory workers, and so on. However, Dolina No Chi is much stranger than appearances might initially imply. The serial depicts as, as almost existing in a bubble, seemingly free from Russia's divisions and turmoil. Moreover, the townsfolk seem to be constantly afflicted by supernatural occurrences. A vast glowing cloud appears above the kindergarten before becoming the principal. A five-headed dragon is arrested by the local police for committing fraud, and a strange force on the outskirts of the town begin whispering to the residents to join it. The absurdism of Welcome to Dolina no Chi is contrasted by the seemingly repetitive nature of its plots, which are unnervingly normal given the circumstances. This has made the serial especially controversial as the show constantly veers between mind-numbing boredom and surreal horror. Some decry it as bizarre and meaningless, while devoted fans gather in cafes to compare notes and share theories. One particularly noteworthy bit of speculation is that the entire town exists in a time loop. Others say it's all a dream, or that the town is in fact located in the American Southwest, or perhaps all three. With Welcome to Dolina no Chi, nobody really knows. There is a thin semantic line separating weird and beautiful, and that line is covered in jellyfish. I've been told to do the West African War sometime. Did they mean Focus Street? God, I wish they did. But they don't. Cameroon, African State? I wish they did. I really wish they did. Stable fronts. High momentum. That's not bad. Yeah, Benin has nothing there. Not bad. Not bad at all. Can't quite do reunification yet, god dang it. We also had a successful raid, so. Oh, we will be making more divisions, actually. I want to get more army XP. Yeah. As long as we get... Because what I want to do is strip these guys of their support companies. So we need 14 more army XP. And then I'll just convert them to these divisions just to save money and equipment and stuff like that. And then make a lot of these divisions eventually. And just keep making some of these division, garrison divisions as well. They're really not bad to have. How long do we have to wait? Mm -hmm. One days. I wish we could get more daily army XP too. That'd be really nice. Oh, fate of Russia, huh? But out. Alright, not bad. Divine Mandate. Of course, we'll have to kill off later. And a little more than two months for this one. Way too many months for that one. Yeah, 62. That takes so long. Holy crap. 4.5%. Not bad. Still have surplus 0.16. And 1.7 for growth. Not bad. Oh my god, how much longer do we have to wait for this one? Right, let's take a look at them again then. 19. Peace conference is over. Who oh, died? Ghana died. 20,000, 6 factories. Um, not bad. I have like 3 to 5 tanks. No infantry equipment, which is good to see. Very, very good to see. They have a few artillery pieces. Support equipment is okay as well. Can we go yet? Please. Please. I has not activated war plan recently. Oh. Okay, do these guys. Yeah, might as well. Oh, they're actually looking slightly better. Uh, actually, that division looks really bad as well. That uh, division's not looking too bad, actually. Uh, this looks like elites. Still not looking great. Hello. Uh, uh, they're going to war with us. That's fine. We can't do this one. So be it. We don't get extra war support. Whatever. As long as we can kill them off, that's all I care about. Crush the Artist Republic. Can you at least have the your, your loot first? I want your loot first, sir. FDG. Please, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, they paid tribute. Yes. Yes. Ah, that's all we cared about. They paid tribute, but they're going to go to war with us anyway. That makes literally no sense. But I'm not going to question it. Thank you. Still no debt now. You're invested when you ever can. Apparently, I've learned that. I think you can only do this once a year, investing in the, in the economy. So, I'm not sure what to say about that. Um, is it better to, like, have more of a surplus? Or is it better to have just spend more so you get more growth? Probably we'll get more growth, maybe. I could be wrong, but we're going to keep it this high. We'll still get a deficit, which is fine with us. And get all that army XP, for the love of God. Please suck on that army XP. Just lots and lots and lots and lots of army XP. Attempted assassination on Sojus Chandra Boz. Unfortunate, man. Unfortunate for you. And we should all also have uh, air superiority here, too. Oh, peace conference is over. Was it Africa? Yeah. Mali. Keep learning. He's becoming an engineer and an organizer. Maybe even a ranger as well. 14th Army victorious in the Philippines. Wow. 10 Army XP now. Good. Scan for loot because he can. 
Not bad. Ooh, we have a little bit more debt now, too. No, the debt too. 2.6%. 0.1 billion is not bad. Yeah, how about here? You might as well. Uh, 11 to 12. Yes. A little bit of struggle for us doesn't hurt because it gives everyone more experience. It gives these guys experience. And obviously when we convert these guys to like militia, it's not, it's going to ruin their experience, but it's fine. Whatever. They can always get more experience later on too, so. All that matters is save money, spend a lot of money, supposedly, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, get a lot more growth. So, oh, we can get war taxes too, but that'd be a waste of like 50 political power and herd of growth and war support for just a few more dollars. That's not worth it. At least right now, it's not worth it at all. About two weeks left for that. Not bad. Good. Uh, what are we missing here? Anything? You know, we got plenty of artillery, anti-air as well, main battle tanks, IFVs, APCs. Of course, we need more planes, cast, fighters, you know, the normal stuff, but still. And we're going to need some political power to core this area as well. Ah, oh, almost a 20. Nice. Since we're here anyways, take off uh, engineers. It's fine. Uh, military police might not be bad, but we'll just go here. Where are we at? There you go. Thank you. Literally just a single division. It's fine. A little bit of lag, but that's okay. Oh, what is this? Oh, credit rating improved. Oh, we overran a division. Good. Oh, we actually improved from mediocre to fair. So we have 10% more debt ceiling. That's nice. Interest rates went down by like one and a half percent. Effects of debt on interest rates zero percent. Stability we got five percent more stability, and effects of g debt on GDP growth we got plus ten ten percent. It looks like maybe. That was tricky, Dick. Yeah. Not bad. Point one. Not bad. Grease palms. There's a certain carte blanche to the fiscal management of the party of the Tomsk. Old Pasternak himself struggled in vain did a couple of tangled web of power and money that curled like old cobwebs around his precious democratic experiment. In the last years, he gave up trying, and the result had been a deeply entrenched corruption that is nearly unnoticeable if one does not look too quickly. Unfortunately for Tomsk, one of the areas where this corruption is very noticeable is a drug trade. It's also the biggest single source of illegal income in the Republic. And when it is big enough barrels offered, the pork will continue uninvited. Uh, it is as Doc as a party representative steps under the dock. As wooden planks creaking with age, he looks around in annoyance. This was, to put it bluntly, a piss poor choice of venue from the company and waits for the prearranged signal. The representative dozes off, sitting there, dreaming of the lights of the sea as the dock surrounds him. He nearly misses the go ahead before he wakes, cursing his nar narcoplectic tendencies. Above him, a harsh red glow, a flare. A peek at the crumpled map, and the representative begins navigating the swamps of the area, occasionally swearing as the local fauna make half hearted passes at his clothing. After what seems like an eternity of walking, he finds a crate right underneath the flare's glow, just as promised, with bundles of cash inside, the smell of heroin still sharp on the per papered surface. As the representative still checks bills after bill for the correct watermarks and insignia, about ten yards from him, a gun safety trigger clicks in the trees. The body is found about three days later. Taking out this country sucks, man. It sucks so much. Well, there's not really much we can really do about that, but uh, it just sucks. Yeah, sport wins, though. That's pretty good. Get more line attack? Why not? But that RMXP, man, even that air XP is not bad. It's not great, but not bad. Dirty business. The revelation that a mid-level modernist functioner was involved in drug smuggling is not in itself shocking. It is so deliberately non-shocking that the entire modernist party from Sakharov all the way down makes a concerted effort both to shake their heads in regret and to look the other way. What is shocking is that the Bastelards, the humanists, and Decemberists to do the exact same thing. The entirety of Russian government in Tomsk began to quietly distance themselves at exactly the same speed, even those elements of it that should have at least leapt at the chance to attack the rivals, the press is quick to catch on, and quickly accusations begin to spread of something bigger than an individual smuggling ring, who is involved, to be more accurate, who is not involved. As the civility of democracy strains and tears itself, police investigations into the uh, Kargaskoisky fishing company prove inconclusive. The crate itself and many others found in the modernist ring bear the logo of the company, but there's no commercial taxable evidence of its existence. Worse, it is as if all those who work for the company were sh or shrouds do while doing so. As witnesses recall next to nothing about the mysterious partners, the investigation comes to a halt and eventually is called off. In far away Kaiser, a bureaucrat signs off on the concluding notes of a dossier and tosses it into the open fire next to him. The stench of burning heroin is there for an instant, and then the flames sear through the fragile paperwork and the smell dissipates. Just another day in the infiltration department. 
Another day, another dollar. Level 5. I mean, he's becoming an organizer. Look at this. He's getting so much more stuff done. A little bit of a struggle, especially for early on, is totally fine with us. Actually, we're going to leave that open, probably. Anything for military expansion? Army drills? Hmm. We're kind of okay for now. We can do maybe do this one more time. Growth? Slightly more growth. Why not? Hmm, too bad for that. Minus 0 0.1, 0 0.09. Still not bad. And this one is going up by quite a bit. And not bad, too. Not bad. Murun? Yes. Set the rail flag. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Because these guys are all cut off and they should be dying pretty pretty fiercely now. If these guys are smart, they try to encircle us, but you know what? We're not going to talk about that. Anything here? Offense? Oh, well, issue. Got offensive clip. Long ago. Is it becoming an organizer? That'd be really good. Slowly. Very slowly. Maybe a little bit more depth. That's fine. 0.12 billion will help cut that off. 7 billion of GDP is not enough, but that's okay for now. And there goes Kennedy. Goodbye, Kennedy. They're still not moving. Where are you all going? Oh, no, that's not us. Um, Starlecker wins in awesome. Not bad. Give it up. These guys are really stupid. Oh, we literally almost killed off the entire division here. Oh, there we go. Nice job, guys. One, two, three. Fate of the Reds. And there we go. Academic base will begin to improve. Admin efficiency will begin to improve as well. Nice. Can I just... I just want to raid him. Oh, Barat and Tannis Republic. How strong are these guys? Soblin. 37,000 manpower. 5 to 7 divisions. Uh, you know what? We can try these guys. Why not? Another raid never hurt. Legacy of Pasternak. 8.6%. 0 0.06 billion. Not bad. Growth is a little bit hurt just because we're trying to integrate some other areas. Hitler's been victorious in the uh, English Civil War. And we have fair credit rating. Uh, if we can get any higher, that'd be great. Uh, if we reach zero progress, further credit rating will downgrade from fair to mediocre. We are peace plus one. Current contributing to our progress are debt to GDP ratios below our real GDP growth rate plus two. Debt to GDP ratios below 75% of our debt ceiling plus two. And we are peace, so it goes up by plus, plus five. Tomb of the Giant. His guards always left him alone for the final part of the trip. Thirty or so meters to the tomb. Likachev carried with him four flowers, each one of each for Tom's salons. An even number as was tradition. Every month he laid a new wreath of flower on Boris Pasternak's final resting place. Took a moment to reflect on the troubled life of the pre author president. Words from Pasternak's book often came to mind on these monthly visits. Had Pasternak sought to justify his own failings, his own past errors, true to his word, the president had fought until the end, carrying his cross to the bitter end. Perhaps it was why the citizens of Tomsk had forgiven him so much. Footsteps behind him, Lekachev had told his guards not to stop anyone from visiting the grave. The December's president turned and saw her, Olga Evenskaya, Pasternak's lover and accomplice, a mostly apolitical figure these days, content to see Pasternak's new republic run itself. She left her own flowers on the grave and took a moment to pray. They chatted a little, some politics, but mostly about the wider world, events in the Russia and beyond. The conversation drifted to a natural end. The woman looked at Lekachev, and the president returned her stare. Will you march west when the time comes, she asked. Lekachev nodded. I will be buried in St. Petersburg no matter what. Both parted ways, walking out of the cemetery and back to the temporal world. Much remained to be done. Pasternak will be the last president buried here. Their fee tribute? Good. Expanding the core? Severe in Phoenix. Expanding politics? Ooh, that's not bad, too. Please turn out more. Legacy of the Workers' Uprising. Ooh, yeah. It's imperative for the long term survival that our citizens believe that the economy of our nation is fair and functional. The Workers' Uprising was a direct result of our failure to convincing them of that fact. Many of those workers that participated in the revolt had been exploited by the government and private businesses during our expansion on the Siberian plan. Working long hours and hard shifts, and boosting overall production and mineral efficiency only to get nothing in return. Is it any wonder they were so angered? In any case, we must begin to improve the economy and quality of life in our nation, so as to avoid such violence in the future. Hmm. Okay, well, we can try it. Oh! It's still raid. Oh. We didn't get anything here. That sucks. So now no one should be able to raid us, right? We have one thing. Oh, Relics of the Past? 400%. 0.487, huh? You get money? 
Yeah, we did nice. Deficit's not bad, so we shouldn't get raided anymore, right? Like I see the Reds, or Fate of the Reds, really. And then we'll do Reunification of Russia once we get this extra loot done. So we can wait just a little bit first. Refer, uh, machines of the passing of this one, please go right ahead. Oh, get a production unit and stability. The soldiers of the PRC had expected death or exile at the end of their lost war. Many were pleasantly surprised to find forgiveness from the Republican army. The PRC's higher-ups were tried in Tomsk. The prosecution against him was not as aggressive as it had been against defeated separatists. The men of the PRC had broken no laws of the CSR by staying true to their old allegiance, nor had they joined in Yagoda's war of aggression to destroy the Republic. The prosecutors noted that the Red Army remnants were still illegally occupying the land claimed by the CSR. This did not warrant, however, treasonous charges as had been used before. The common soldiers and officers were offered to join the Republican army. This was a tempting offer to many. War was a craft, and the Republic seemed honorable men intent on helping Russia. Others found the humiliation of joining their enemies too much to bear. They fought for Vasilevsky, who now risked a lengthy prison sentence. They fought for the communism, not the restoration of a shaky capitalist regime. When the People's Revolutionary Council came to a bittersweet end, torn apart by the Republic's mercy. Old comrades said goodbye to one another as half the men gave up their swords, while the other half agreed to be deployed away from Mongolia. Many Mongolian soldiers vanished without a word into the border with Mongolia, seeking to continue their own fights. They would miss their Russian brothers in arms. For many, their, their war was over. The private sector, growth will go up, the inflation will go up slightly. Rationalize SOEs. Ooh. Relief for farmers. No, stronger armor. Oh, expanded the core. This is, this is the military one. Usually the one on the left is usually the economy stuff or close to it, or social stuff, so... Forebears, that's not bad too. Expanding the military academy. Military professionals will begin to improve, which is actually very, very strong. Uh, twice. And then, can we get thrice? Thrice anywhere here? No? Darn it. Yeah, darn it. December's army's not bad. Daily army XP gain? Not bad. Uh, the Republican march is... The Republic, Repu Russian Republic is on the march. Northern Plains. Admin or advisory returns. Expanding politics. Discord in the salons. Watch private sector. Hmm... More income, you need to get some more goods for a year. Agriculture, yeah, this one's next. Relief for farmers. Heavy fighting in recent years has disrupted many rural areas within our nation. Fields have been shelled, tread over, and in some rare cases, gas as well. Crop production is falling across the nation, and many farmers are unable to make ends meet as a result of circumstances entirely out of their control. We must work to aid these ailing farmers. Free materials and supplies for rebellion will be made to the all farmers whose livelihoods have been destroyed. Additionally, tax exemptions will be offered to farmers, affected as they work to repair their farms, of course. Couple more days, you never know. Actually, since we're here, we're gonna start training some of these guys too. Go with six. Actually, you know what? We don't even train them yet. We don't need them yet. We don't need them yet. We do not need them. Not yet. Just wait till this one's done. Still get some growth. Not much, but still better than nothing. <laughs> tax tap guy. Tax hike. Really for farmers? And then watch the private sector. The private sector is much like a toddler, capable of bringing one great joy, but when not handled correctly can make your life a living heck. An outcome we much like to avoid. As we attempt to reform the economy and implement goods policy, we must con must be cognizant of the ever-ravenous and greedy businessmen in the private sector. If during our attempts to deregulate the market or implement new taxation policies, we leave even a minor loophole or misplaced coma, or comma, we could end up losing tens of millions of dollars. We mustn't let the private sector get ahead of us. It's not yet. And now we can do independence for the Algerian Union. Oh, oh that's kind of strange, but okay. I'm back in the old days, and you know, these guys had actual focus street, but whatever. Expertise, thank you. Four divisions, a lot of manpower. Saeed Boliam. Cool. And now let's go and do this. From the CSR. We are now in control of all important cities in Central Siberia. Now we will announce to all that Central Siberian Re Republic as a beginning of democracy, and more importantly, hope to all Russians. We could overextend it. Admin. God dang it. Central Siberian Republic, yeah. There you go. Basic army, disorganized economy, political crisis. Oh, crap. Not this stuff. The Republic has survived and is now thriving under the guidance of a Pasternak's constitution. However, the great poet's final gift is not universally loved, especially among recaptured territories. Independent politicians struggle to win power outside of the great salons. Many citizens in the pre offenses believe the system is meant to cynically maintain the dominance of the Tom's elite at the expense of everyone else. We must remain vigilant and show that our four vanguard political associations are true to their ideals and welcoming of any newcomer. Failure to do so could result in cynicism or in the rise of independent politicians. Left unchecked, both issues could cause a failure of a revolutionary diplomatic experiment. Idealism. 54%. No political outsiders. But Integration Outsiders Act. I guess there's people for sitting. Oh my goodness. So we probably want what? Idealism versus cynicism. Political integration. Extreme amount of political outsiders. 
Expand the university system. Ooh, that's not bad. You lose weekly, you lose weekly stability. Ooh, that's not good either. I'll promote the elite to get more. You lose, you lose a lot of stability. Flexible elector requirements greatly decreases political outsiders. It greatly decreases December's popularity, though. Recruit the best outsiders. Cross salon thinking decreases our authority. Managing development. The old CSR has been reestablished. As Russia emerges out of its slumber, the basis of a true modern nation state can be built. The great question, however, is what type of society should the uh, Republic shape up to be? More importantly, should each salon be true to its own vision? Each salon has different ideas about developing the army, the political system, and the economy. The citizens expect every salon to follow up on their electoral promises. In the event of a salon losing power to another salon, the citizens would be disappointed to see the new government merely maintain the previous administration's policies. While the cost of scrapping months or years of reforms in one area could be great, the cost of cynically failing to follow one's ideals could be even greater. Disorganized? Political crisis. We have a basic army. Reunification of Russia. You gotta wait till 69, of course. Uh, close that one out. Radio integration. Oh. That's a long booty time. Holy crap. And now we can do all this stuff, too. State welfare. Power will begin to improve. Additional subsidies. Industrial equipment will begin to slowly improve. We also want anything for poverty here, too. It just barely improves the GDP growth, but that's fine. Higher important structures is also very quite good to do as well. Is there anything about admin efficiency? Power grid. Uh, we're good on the power grid. Returning expatriates is okay. Higher foreign structures is very good as well. Like I said earlier, agriculture will get better. Import heavy machinery. Education is actually quite good as well. Scientific stuff. Worker training is not bad. I like that one for the in industry for next year as well. Construction. Encourage political thought. Eh, it's okay. And we're going to need some political power too. Oh, for 60 days. So for 60 days, you get 0.5. So really, it costs 65 for this. But for 60 days, you get 30, 30 political power. But you get stability as well. You spend money and you get some stuff here. But eh, it's okay. Uh, encourage agriculture modernization. This one. Eh, at least we got one of these two sometime. All right, so it's 64. Keep working on that stuff too. And if that's the case, that's probably a really bad idea. But let's save the game. And let's just convert all the divisions to the one type of template, save some money for now, and spend the living crap out of everything we have. Is that a good idea? Probably not, but hey, that's something I've never done before. There you go. Money-wise, 0.15. We'll see its effects very soon seen. Oh, well, 0.4. It's not good. Hmm. 0 0.15. 0.4. Legacy of the Great Unification. The CSR was back from the brink. Every last one of the misguided separatists had been crushed, and orders finally being restored across the region. But... The workers are returning to, oh, look at that, their factories and citizens of the other CSR factions are not yet in open revolt, but tensions are probably high. As of now, the rather overextended republic is still functional. Gradual progress is being made with the central Siberian plan, though the industrialization project will of course have to be expanded to the entirety of the region. The government is at least a summit of legitimacy and loose authority over its people, but will have to tread very carefully if it wants to earn the trust of its people and develop into a fully-fledged nation-state. Not to mention reunify the entirety of Russia, and the cafe is home to bars and factories. The people question openly to each other whether Pasternak's great con constitution and our salons are truly as idealistic and as for the people as they claim to be. There's a great risk of our citizens becoming cynics, whose apathy could single-handedly be our republic's downfall. Some may become so angry that they run for office outside of our salon system, threatening the balance and stability of our government currently enjoys, for starters. Developing the economy, maintaining political stability, and improving our army are imperative for our administration's success. Idealism can only take us so far. This great republican experiment is in a survivable, challenging position, and we must do what we can to keep it alive. That being said, if we utterly sacrifice our ideals, will any of our work have been worth it? The republic carries on the revival of Norilsk. With the age of warlordism slowly coming to close in central Siberia, with the resources of the region firmly under our control, it's time for us to move north to reconnect the resource-rich areas of Norals to the rest of our nascent state, formerly infamous for its expansive use of forced labor during the days of the Soviet Union. Since its collapse, the region slowly fell into disrepair, finally being lost to us when the Siberian War led to the collapse of the soviet rum state formed after the Second World War. Now we have a chance to reclaim those territories for our people, bringing its political riches back into the Russian hands. Let us not repeat the mistakes of the past. Great. And stuff about reconnect the roads. Yes, please. We close out of the stuff since we can't do it anyways. Uh, reunification, reading and looting, no. Um, political integration, we want more uh, integration, right? So how does this affect us? Legacy of the Siberian plan, all green, that's nice. We have formation in the salons, of course, which is very strong, like I said last time. Kuznets Basin, aircraft plant, Crest Norris Railway Junction. Overextended admin is god-awful. I hate that so much. We have a basic army, which sucks. This organized economy, which sucks. A political crisis, which sucks. Everything here sucks. Hover mm. over the mouse. 
uh, increases idealism, and decreases political outsiders. I kind of want more political insiders, though. Ooh, but this is really good to do as well. Uh, expand the university system. And when removed, it decreases political outsiders. Extreme amount. Yeah. Mm, 64. Might as well do that one right now. Because we can. Relief for farmers. Oh, in the coming storm. And the frenzy push to reunify Siberia and restore its rival dignity whispers grown. As the light has gained purchase, so too has our shadow. Festering upon the inherent cruelty of our actions has waited for a moment to strike. The days have emerged from the dark, boldly declaring, I am, I was, I will be. I should not have converted these divisions over. My apologies. But, uh, workers across the central Siberian industrial zones have begun a massive coordinated general strike. Setting continually poor conditions, unfulfilled promises, and unrepented cruelty by bosses. It drives, uh, appears to drive to return civilization to the Russian waste has come with many drawbacks, as a lofty dream of a united Russia has become less alluring when one cannot feed his family, or keep all of his limbs intact. Additionally, with the return of normalcy to the region, the worker himself seems to have become less valuable, simply a pawn towards the eventual goal. Already work has ground, been grounded to a halt. Demands are being made and old scores are being settled, while some in our government may be sympathetic to the cause of the strikers. It is undeniable that we cannot tolerate a crippled economy, uh, especially considering the uh, always precarious position of Russia. The strikers are numerous and militant. Unless we can come to some kind of deal and ensure workers did some tangible piece of prosperity we promise, we must brace for the storm to come. Harrowing. And we should have anything else here. Uh, there's a strain. As much as I want to do this one next, we, get, we really got to reduce strain, so. Politics. The Republic stands triumphantly over all of its former territories. Yet in this hour of victory, the Republic has perhaps never been more divided politically. Emboldened by the years of independence, separatists, former Siloviki, mutineers of Krasnorsk, and anarchists of the SBA all mill around. Uncertain of the future, and wary of our political system. Our innovative constitution is limited in some aspects, with a strict emphasis on the four great salons. At the same time, Pasternak's great constitution empowers us to experiment, to try new things, to welcome new ways of doing things. If our great Republican project is to endure, we must dare to dream ever bigger dreams and inspire ever greater amounts of people to believe in our ideals. The Republic must endure in the Petrov Salon evening Duma. It had seemed such a short time ago that Anatoly Petrov sat at this very table, and I'll take to his family that he was joining the Republican military, or the Republic's military, and relatively it was, but he was no longer the same boy, no longer the same man. With the regional campaigns complete, the Republic reunited, he had been given leave. He had returned home to warm hugs from his mother and sister, and even one of the greater respect from his father. Each had believed in their own way that, that, what he fought for, and shown the truth of their own outlook, their own salon. But he had done nothing of the sort. Indeed, everything he had proven to him, the limited worldview of each set of ideals, the Bastillards, the Sembrists, Modernists, and Humanists had all at their core had a set of beliefs that they could not, would not deviate from, beliefs which their adherents, including his own family, could not see the limitations of. He could, and as a result, he no longer believed in any of them. His belief was a belief in nothing, a paradox in itself that Anatoly naturally questioned. Could a man exist without any beliefs? And if so, what did that make him? What did that mean for how he approached life? Did it make him more able to respond to challenges, no longer shackled by one aesthetic viewpoint? Or did it make him less able, without a consistent moral center? As another round of arguments erupted between his father and sister on aspect of economic policy, one which he once would have had gladly participated in, Anatoly remained silent. He no longer saw the purpose. What makes a man? The eye wall. The severity of the general strike has expanded into newly entire new dimensions. Following a lack of progress towards any kind of resolution and continuous violence, the workers have taken up arms. Reading weapon stockpiles, looting old cellars, and outright stealing has become widespread as arms and ammo began to be passed among militants. Already, workers are organizing themselves into general defense committees. This is an extremely dangerous situation, and the specter of uprising hangs in the air. We must tread more carefully than we ever have before, while the same moving as quietly or as quickly as possible to secure ourselves. And we do not act. This could be the end of all things, dudes. But if you like this episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we all have to deal with this revolt with a very severely weakened military because I made a mistake. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.